Hello everyone and welcome back to Destiny. The news flow is going to be picking up quite a bit as we approach the Destiny 2 launch and today is no exception. We got some really interesting information from an early copy of this month's Edge magazine which does feature Destiny 2 as its cover story. Inside the issue is some very exciting news including how Bungie wants to make you more powerful in the game, how the game will feature over 80 missions and PvE activities, and some really strong hints at the potential of seeing that elusive third subclass coming at launch. There's a lot to talk about, so let's jump in and break it all down. So the information comes from Reddit user Kapowas as he received an early copy of the latest Edge magazine in the UK, and their cover story this month is Destiny 2. Now we'll get into specifics throughout the week as we learn more information from the issue, but there are some really exciting highlights that I think are worth pointing out. First up is some pretty exciting news in reference to how energy weapons are going to be impacting the final game. During an interview inside the issue, Luke Smith stated, the beta did not contain the final implementation of how energy weapons will work against AI combatants with elemental shields. When the shield is depleted, it explodes, nuking any enemies that happen to be nearby. I thought I already saw this in action during the beta, but maybe it was just more of an animation. Perhaps in the final game it'll be a bit more pronounced and a bit more devastating to smaller enemies. But now moving on to the more exciting stuff, we have a bit more information about how Nightfalls are going to be working in Destiny 2. We already know they're changing things up quite a bit for the fact that we have a normal mode and a heroic mode, which is definitely a bit of a head scratcher, but now we're starting to see possibly why that might be. We already knew that some PvE activities were going to feature something called a locked loadout, meaning that you can't switch out your weapons once you start an activity. My guess is that it's going to be for heroic versions of the Nightfall and the Raid, but through this issue, we're starting to learn about a few more details that are going to make Nightfalls definitely a bit more challenging, including the addition of a countdown timer. Now, currently in Destiny, we do have a countdown timer, but it's only so you can complete the Sunrise Bounty. But in Destiny 2, it looks like it's a bit more of a hard time limit, meaning that you'll be probably kicked or wiped out if you don't finish the activity within the time limit. The article does mention that the time limits will vary between activities, but one example given was 13 minutes. That's not a lot of time, so you're definitely going to have to coordinate with your team and be effective in combat. And on top of that, another small detail that was attached to this news was in regards to clan rewards. It looks like we now have our first example about how you can contribute to your clan in a very serious way. In this issue, we learned that if someone else in your clan completes a Nightfall, you will still be granted a reward of some kind, even though you can't complete it. We don't know if that means that you'll get hard loot, or if it means it'll be experience to ranking up your clan. That stuff still remains to be seen, but it's still very exciting. My only concern with this is that I hope that there is a cap of how many rewards you can get from something like this, because I would really hate to see a clan with a higher player count get a strong advantage over those who might only have a couple dozen. Moving on to the next highlight from this cover story, we have some pretty exciting news about the campaign and story missions of Destiny 2. It has been confirmed that there are over 80 missions and PvE activities, and each is substantial in length, challenge, story, and reward. Now, I don't think this means there's going to be 80 campaign missions, but that does include things like Lost Sectors, Adventures, Quests, and of course, Strikes, which honestly, for your progression and for learning more about the Destiny universe, might ultimately be more important, as we know Lost Sectors and Adventures are going to be excellent ways for us to learn more about the story of Destiny 2, as well as, of course, gaining awesome loot. In fact, in this interview, Luke Smith expressed that there was so much new content at one point that they realized that they had more content than progression, something that they subsequently fixed. Now, you can take this to mean several ways, maybe they dialed back the rewards, but I think it actually means that they revamped the way rewards work in story missions, which is definitely a nice change. But thinking more on this, I think this actually brings back an old topic of prestigious gear. A few weeks ago, we saw something called prestigious gear, which was the reward for completing the flashpoint. So my guess is that this is their new name for gear that is guaranteed to be better than something that you already have equipped. This is a system that currently exists in Destiny, but it was added in during the Taken King, and is something that is never explained to you in-game and is completely invisible to players. Giving it a label like prestigious gear would go a long way to make players feel like they're actually progressing to get stronger. 
Now, during Edge Magazine's visit to Bungie, they apparently came across some information that Bungie would rather them not reveal to players, and that does include some potential exciting news for the Hunter. It seems new information about the Hunter class has left reviewers very happy that the class will be shaping up very well. It seems like Bungie has heard our feedback about the Hunter and wants to demonstrate how effective the Hunter will actually be in PvE. One example was emphasizing the way of the sharpshooter perk, Crowd Pleaser, which enables precision damage with Golden Gun, and getting those precision hits will generate orbs of light for your allies. This is an ability we already knew, but now we know that it will actually generate 12 orbs of light, which will be enough to fully charge a super from scratch. I can envision raid scenarios emerging where you have your hunter hold on to their Golden Gun until the Titan needs to cast a Ward of Dawn bubble, something along those lines. Now, if that's not selling it to you, Edge Magazine was not allowed to talk about the details, so that strongly hints at the fact that there might be a third subclass at launch, which honestly, at this point, I strongly believe we will be getting. My guess is that it's a surprise for post-campaign. Once we restore the Traveler's Light, I think we'll go on a quest to reattain a third subclass. It might not necessarily be Night Stalker. They would have to reimagine that a bit to make it a roaming super, if that's what they end up doing. But I do believe it'll be a Void Support subclass at the very very least. Next up, I want to point out some really interesting information about how Bungie is emphasizing the use of exotic gear with your abilities. The example they gave was an exotic chest piece that would allow you to not only hover in air, but also granting you more grenade energy on each kill you get while airborne. Now, the Dawnblade Attunement of Sky Focus already has these perks. If you combine Heat Rises with Winged Sun, you can basically achieve the same thing, but it will most likely be something that grants these effects to other subclasses. Or even better yet, if you stick with Dawnblade and choose Attunement of Flame, which is the bottom subclass focus, you will still be able to use these abilities. Now, of course, this is not the first time we've seen exotic armor granting you subclass perks, and it's something that I theorized that Bungie would be focusing a lot on in a video I did a while back about how simpler subclasses doesn't mean that you have less choices. It was definitely a very hot topic a while back, so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check out that video. Anyways, that was a general overview of everything that we learned from the Edge Magazine cover story, and as we learn more specific details, I'll be covering it right here on the channel. I'll also leave a link down below to the original Reddit post in case you want to click over and read that verbatim. Aside from that, earlier today I did post a Let's Play for Overwatch. I haven't done one of those in a very long time, so be sure to click over to that if that interests you. Also, be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed the video, and please come back on Monday. I will be making a very special announcement on the channel, so you definitely don't want to miss out on that. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and turn on those notifications so you'll be alerted when I post. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.